Okay, good morning, everybody. Welcome to our Friday morning coffee chat. We'll be getting underway very shortly. Okay, good morning, everybody. Okay. I'm sorry about that. <laughs> Must remember to keep my volume off on this computer. Hope you're all doing well. This is our Friday morning coffee chat. Q&A, your chance to ask me anything. And uh, hope you're all doing well. It's a Friday morning here, which is always exciting. Um, well, it is for some people. People in jobs, I guess, it's exciting for. <laughs> Every day is exciting for me. Um, but yeah, so this is, for those who are new, this is our regular Friday morning coffee chat. It's your chance to ask any questions at all that you've got about learning to paint, um, about the Learn to Paint Academy, about the more method of painting, about the business side of art, uh, about the life and times of being an artist, um, how to go about it. Um, anything at all, really, and uh, it's your time. So hopefully you've got some questions for me. Um, while we're getting underway, if you've got arty friends that you think would benefit, then make sure you uh, invite them to come and join us. And um, a couple of little links here for you. How's that for technology? Have a look at her laptop there. Fantastic. Um, why is that dropping out? Um, um, let me just check. Hmm. Seems okay. Um, yeah, just a couple of links for you. If you haven't done so already, we have our free ebook, um, which is the keys to improving your painting. You can get that at www.learntopaint.academy forward slash book. Um, so it's a free PDF book and uh, goes through the keys to how to improve your painting. Uh, we've also put together the More Method of Painting program, um, which is like an introductory course. Uh, to what we do at the Learn to Paint Academy. So you can get that at learntopaint.academy forward slash MMOP. Standing for more method of painting, of course. And if you want to become a full member of the Learn to Paint Academy and access 50 plus courses and all the projects and everything else we've got going on, then learntopaint.academy forward slash join is where you need to go. I'll pop those links up at the end. Um, so... Remind me to pop them back up at the end. Okay, let's just, uh, so that's just a little bit of preamble just while we're waiting for people. Some exciting news today, which I'll tell you about. Global news, not just Rod Moore news or Learn to Paint Academy news, but global news we'll talk about. Morning, Margaret in Victoria Point. G'day, Dorinda. G'day, Becky. G'day, Steve. G'day, Cheryl. G'day, Manju. Sajada, good morning. Afternoon tea. Hey, Jenny. Hey, Tatiana. G'day, Gail. G'day, Ian in Bribey. Good to see you. Just down the road. G'day, Margaret. G'day, Winnie. In Winnie in Windy, Melbourne. <laughs> I feel for you. I used to live in Geelong. Windiest place and coldest place on earth. G'day, Russ. How are you, mate? G'day, Serena. G'day, Janet. And g'day, Yvonne in WA. Morning, Audrey. G'day, Tracy in the Bay. Magdalene in Hobart. G'day, Gail in Geelong. Brr. <laughs> Morning, Pauline. Morning, Anne in WA. Um, just hold off on questions for the moment because um, because uh, I've got a few things to cover and we'll come back to questions. I've tried to get the ebook not been successful yet. Well, we have a support desk, Audrey. Uh, if you go to learntopaint.academy forward slash support, they'll help you out with whatever problem you're having there. Morning, Jenny. Meant to be a flower. Very nice, thank you. Wales is the coldest place on earth. Yes, you're probably right, Pauline. You're probably right. Um, I remember being in Manchester in October, and that was exciting. <laughs> um, where do we get up to here? Morning, Anne in the US. Carolyn, how are you? And the other Anne, good morning. G'day, Jane. G'day, Stephen in Scotland. Desley. You found me. Good on you, Desley. Morning, Mary, in the Midlands of Ireland. Good morning, Darlene. How are you? Watching the sunset in a cool autumn evening in South Georgia. Sounds delightful. G'day, Peggy, in Georgia. Brenda, in New Brunswick, Canada. Howdy. Uh, so, um, and for those who are new, I'm actually streaming across a number of different sites. So if you're not seeing some of the people I'm saying hi to on your newsfeed, it's because we're streaming 
on a couple of Facebook pages and also into our members area. So, um, g'day Peter in New Zealand and Barb, good morning. G'day Debbie, g'day Sandy, g'day Judy, g'day Robert in Ireland, g'day Carolina and Meryl in WA, good to see you. All right, well, we have got some, I've got a couple of little things to go through with you. And then we've, I've got um, talk about the big global news overnight, f- overnight for me. And uh, then we'll open it up for questions. Um, so first of all, you know I love art books, right? So I just wanted to show you this one. This is French Impressionism um, from the, Boston, the Museum of Fine Arts in Boston. Okay, but this book is put out by National Gallery of Victoria. Now let me just see if I can't. Um, National Gallery of Victoria. So at, over the last few months, the National Gallery of Victoria has been holding an exhibition which nobody's been able to attend, <laughs> myself included. Um, and what they've done, they've taken all the French Impressionist paintings out of, well, not all of them, but a collection of them, out of the Museum of Boston Art um, and brought them to Melbourne. And I was actually headed there to go and see this exhibition. Um, and there's just, just some beautiful work in there. So, um, and there was some stuff in here I'd never seen, like... Uh, Eugene Boudin, who uh, was a mentor to Monet. It was a beautiful use of greys. Um, so I was pretty excited to get the book. I would have preferred to have actually been able to go. Um, but hey, if you're in the eastern side of the US of A, when this exhibition winds up, all these paintings will be going back to the Museum of Fine Arts in Boston. And um, gee, it'd be, uh, it'd be crazy not to... Um, Head there for that. You can stop in at New York and go to the Met on the way. Um, still life's up, my favourite thing, but there's a couple of really nice still lifes in there. Um, so this book's available via the National Gallery of Victoria online website. No doubt. All right. If you want to get a copy of it. Now, I haven't had a chance to read it yet. I've just got it the other day. Uh, but there's some really nice work in there. So I'm really glad I bought that book. And, you know, when these exhibitions come along, it's not that often in this day and age that we get major exhibitions of French Impressionist work and so on. So that's why I always buy the book as a reference. And they're usually a good quality, well, to give a book, great um, commentary in them on the history of the different artists and so on. So I um, highly recommend that one. The other one I got is mastering composition now you know i'm always going on about composition and we've got a, a full course in the learn to paint academy on composition and design but it's really um sort of what would you call it um it's introductory level composition and design is what we've got in the course so far now my plan is over time is to develop the course out further as i will with the values course and color mixing so this particular book is all about composition mastering composition by ian roberts and um you know there are some interesting concepts in here which i just wanted to show you a couple of pictures like he gets into all the old master um composition structures that they used um and he explains them in detail now i don't know that we need to get to that level of detail but I do think having an understanding um, will certainly help. He also gets into things like um, fulcrum and weighting, some of the things we've already talked about in our composition course. But he's, um, which one is it? This one here, you can see he's talking about the weighting there. I think that diagram actually is wrong because the heavier end would be lower. But you can see the example there, right? The weighting on one side with the cloud and the tree. So he goes into a lot of the principles we've talked about. Um, but there's a whole lot more detail in here as well. And then he gets into things that aren't really composition, although they are, depending on how you think about it. You know, setting up still life structures and things like that. So I highly recommend that one. Steve said I bought the Ian Roberts book a month or two ago. Fantastic. Ian Roberts is a very good artist. He is, yeah. Dave said I'm so glad to have become a member. Very excited. Good on you, Dave. Great to have you here, mate. Um, my mum. So yeah, a couple of books, and then we'll have a quick chat about the big breaking news overnight, global news, um, which, you know, you can never be excited about, or you can completely view it in a different way. Um, G'day, Brenda. G'day, Wendy. How are you? In Cleveland. (coughs) 
G'day Nina, g'day Betty, g'day Carleen, how are you? Um, is the book expensive? Well, I guess that's a relative thing. Um, for one person it'll be expensive and for others it might be cheap. So it um, depends on your definition of expensive, I guess. Pauline said, my husband told me no more art books, but I'm sure I'll sneak in a few more. Well, this is precisely the reason why yesterday we did a uh, an entire webinar on how to start selling your artwork, right? Because I wanted to, you know, in the early days, I wanted to keep buying books and DVDs and, you know, and so I started selling my artwork to be able to fund that. And, um, and pretty much anyone can do that, you know, from pretty much the beginning of your, of your art journey. Um, Audrey says, I love how you reference books. Me too. Books, books, books. On my 11th birthday... My mother says she walked past the toilet and I was in the toilet. I was 11 years old. It was my birthday. And she heard me muttering the phrase, books, 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 bloody books. That's all they ever get me, she reckons. Anyway, that's what she says. And um, that may or may not have been true. But today I just absolutely love books. Um, I've got a big collection of books, both art and other areas of the world. <coughs> um, all right. Now, who's ready for the discussion around the big breaking news overnight. Um, <coughs> Steve says, first time seeing live on the web instead of Facebook. I'll get on you, Steve. We're potentially eventually going to move everything over onto a member platform. Just exploring different options at the moment. I'll tell you more about some of the challenges we've creating an online community and things like that and how we might evolve because I've got big plans to scale up um, in terms of bringing in lots more people. I think what we do obviously works and um, I want to reach out to as many other artists around the world as we can. And that means scaling um, what we do at the Learn to Paint Academy. But then, of course, scaling requires having the right technology, technology platforms to be able to manage that. So... Um, we need to talk about that and different options in the future. Becky says, what's the news? Dorinda wants to know. Margaret wants to know what the news is. So I've got three people. Global news, says Susan. <laughs> Kathleen says, love your story. Good on you, Kathleen. Morning, Terry. Oh, Terry sold a couple of paintings. She sent me a message overnight. <coughs> Not didn't get a chance to respond. But well done, Terry. That's fantastic. I'm um, getting a couple of commissions. And uh, well done to everybody who's been selling your artwork. All right. Now, Terry wants to know what's the news. Audrey wants to know. Pauline wants to know. Gail wants to know. My problem is never getting around to reading all my books. That's not a problem, Gail. Just surround yourself with books and you'll be smarter just for having them. Okay. That's enough chit-chat from me. Let let me just cut back to there while I figure out what I'm doing. I know it looks like I know what I'm doing. <laughs> That's really the case. Um, okay, so overnight. Oh, before before I uh, before I go into it, I'll just give you a little bit of background, right? So, ten years ago, when I decided I was going to become a full time artist. I kind of knew that I probably wasn't going to sell enough artwork to be able to pay the mortgage and stuff in the early days. And so I had to figure out another way of generating an income from art, right? And um, I, I, I've always had a gift for taking information and packaging it up and, and making it simpler and teaching it to people. So um, that became a natural sort of thing for me was to start teaching art. And here we are today, 10 years later. Um, so, you know, in those early days, I was looking for what's the way forward for me to be able to do that, to be able to build a teaching business, right? And obviously the internet was a thing, YouTube was around then, but video didn't stream that well. And then I saw Bob Ross on YouTube, right? An episode of Bob Ross on YouTube and found out that he and then Bill Alexander had TV programs. And I thought to myself, TV, that's what I've got to do. I've got to start a TV show, right? Which we did, um... And it's amazing how things just sort of work out sometimes. But we ended up doing two different TV shows, 13 episodes each. 
and um, and they went all around Australia. Prime Time, the first TV show we did was Prime Time for 13 episodes um, up against The Block and MasterChef and stuff here in Australia. And I believe they were played in New Zealand as well. Um, but, you know, TV is a difficult thing. It wasn't that sustainable. And I was really looking at what's the future, you know, what, what's the future going to be? And YouTube was just emerging as a powerhouse. And I thought to myself, you know, one day people are going to do um, people are going to learn how to paint and pretty much everything else, like cook, play guitar, online, right? There's going to be online schools where you can go and you can learn pretty much whatever you want via video lessons. And at the time, I had no idea about live stream, what we're doing right now, hadn't hadn't heard of it, right? Um, so that was 10 years ago. And so talking to other artists at the time, they all thought I was crazy, right? They thought I was crazy doing a TV show, and maybe I was because it wasn't very sustainable. Um, but on you know online art lessons, nobody will ever be interested in that. They thought, or well, that's what they said, right? But I thought to myself, no, one day it's going to happen. And it was slow going until the pandemic hit, and then, of course, that turned everything upside down. And all of a sudden, online learning became um, a thing, right? Everybody was accepting it. And a whole lot of other artists have rushed in to try and um, um, start their own online teaching because they could no longer do physical workshops around the world, which is great, right? Because it's made um, greater opportunity for all of us, whether it's to learn or to on the teaching side. Um, and so, you know, we've been going along, everything's great, and we're looking to get bigger at what we do and to have, reach out to more artists around the world. And then um, overnight, last night, and I don't think anybody's actually guessed what I'm talking about here yet. I don't, let me have a look. What's the news? What's the news? I've been waiting for somebody to actually guess. <laughs> Just don't do housework. No, that's not it. The suspense <laughs> is intense. Sorry about that. Um, so Magdalene's kind of on the right track, but it's not just a, a name change. It's what they're actually doing that's the important part, right? So um, there's been, this has been bubbling away in the news for the last three weeks um, that Facebook are rebranding and they're doing what Google did a year or two ago, right? So Google used to be known as Google, but they obviously bought other businesses and created other businesses. And, um, and so they created a parent company called Alphabet, which was just a ridiculous name. Come on, people at Google, where's your imagination? Um, but they created this parent company, Alphabet. So Google is now one company within the, the conglomerate of, of Alphabet, right? So Facebook have announced that they're going to do the same thing. They're changing their name, or they're not actually changing the name of Facebook. I think that's been maybe mis, misreported. But their, their parent company is going to become a company called Meta. And um, Facebook and WhatsApp and Instagram are all going to sit under that. But they also have a number of other businesses and, and research and development um, businesses. And so the news isn't so much that they're changing their name, you know, and that they're having a new parent company with a name Meta. The actual news is their vision of what they're doing and what they're working towards over the next 10 years. And you might be wondering, what's this got to do with art, right? We'll get to that in a second. Um, but Meta really is uh, what, what the term is, Metaverse, right? It's like the whole universe, but it's in a virtual um way it's virtual reality right so in many ways what we do here if you join me for the live sessions or the online courses that we do it's a virtual learning environment right we're not sitting in the same room even though sometimes it feels like that so the vision that facebook and others but facebook i i think are probably putting a, a stake in the ground and saying we're going to lead the field is that the future is going to be virtual reality or augmented reality worlds that we interact with. Um, and the technology is already available to be able to do this. Um, so last night, my time, so about 3 a.m., Mark Zuckerberg did a thing. He did a, a live stream, which um, I thought was pretty interesting. Let me just grab this. And I highly recommend... Um, watching this, right? It's called Connect 2021, Our Vision for the Metaverse. And, you know, what, he's, what he was talking about in this, I'm not going to play it. I'm just going to just zip through parts of this. Um, 
it was a pretty well orchestrated um, presentation, right? But so you, what he's talking about is creating these virtual reality worlds where we can come together and interact. And one of the examples that he gave was that, you know, for years we've been going into big corporate offices for those who work in corporates, right? We get in the car and we travel, um, you know, in the traffic, burning fossil fuels, and we go to these great big concrete jungles and, you know, all the people in the company all interact there. And um, <laughs> I don't know about that picture. Um, and what is basically he, the vision that they've got is to create these online virtual reality worlds where you can interact with, and it's a fully immersive experience. He was even talk, talking about the idea of teleporting using holograms and so on. So you can think about a corporation, like a big accounting firm, instead of 500 people all going into a, a concrete box in the city, which is an environmental disaster when you think about it, they could all be remote, but they could simulate this virtual world where they all go and interact in a virtual way and still achieve the same output or perhaps even more productive and so on. So that's one example that he gave, right? But my mind immediately went to you guys. Imagine if we could create virtual online workshops where it feels like you're actually in the workshop interacting with the other students in real time and the, and the instructor um, and you could be painting along in this virtual reality world, right? So um, I thought it was fascinating and I can see huge potential and I think within the next five years, the way we learn you know, in this sort of online environment is going to dramatically change. And I was excited about that. Now, a lot of people have been rubbishing Facebook and making nasty comments about the name and all that sort of stuff. Um, and uh, I think it's so much more than an app or a YouTube channel. I think it's far bigger than that. I think it's going to completely redefine the nature of how we interact as human beings. Um, and within that, the, within that context, sorry, I've, I thought I'd put back on me. Within that context will be how we learn, how we work, how we play, how we get entertainment, um, how we have experiences, right? And, and I think it's really exciting. And um, one thing that I'm going to focus on um, is keeping on top of the technology as it develops. And, um, you know, as when I started out doing online courses, I was one of the very few that were doing it 10 years ago. Um, and we'll make sure that the Learn to Paint Academy is at the forefront of however this unfolds, um, but virtual reality and augmented reality, um, you know, teaching and learning. Um, does that mean you can stay in your PJs, Jenny? Absolutely you can. <laughs> um, you definitely can. So I'm, look, I was really excited about it and I just thought I'd share it with you. I think it's the future. And um, I think that it will benefit all of us. So um, that was the big global on global news online overnight. Um, I haven't watched the full presentation that he did, um, but I definitely will over the next day or so. Um, so there we go. Virtual reality. You know, imagine if we could schedule a workshop, a two-day workshop, where you don't have to leave home, but you actually had the experience of being in the classroom environment, and we could have 500 of, of our students in there. You could all be painting along, and the instructor, which would be me or one of our MCIs, um, could be you know wandering through and giving you personalised feedback in real time, but it's all simulated in virtual reality. I think um, it would just be incredible. So, um, and and for those of you who are in our more certified instructor program. Um, I'd highly suggest that you get, you know, start really focusing in on the online workshop space, um, because you know there's going to be more pandemics. There's going to be more um, talk about stopping using fossil fuel, and and the old world that we've all sort of grown up in. It's changing, right? So if you're in the more certified instructor program, start learning how to use your mobile phone to create content in video format and then keep on top of what's happening with this because within five years, it'll completely redefine the landscape. And if you're thinking about starting to teach art, you, you want to make sure this is on your radar. Okay. So I think it's going to be exciting and um, definitely want to make sure that Learn to Paint Academy is going to be at the forefront of whatever developments there are. All right. 
Manjus is all great. Always wanted to attend your workshops. Yeah, fantastic. It'll be, you know, like at the moment, there are artists doing workshops on Zoom, but it's a very clunky technology um, and it relies on the students knowing how to get their camera to see their easel and it, it doesn't really work that elegantly. But with what they're talking about with virtual reality, I think it's going to be uh, pretty amazing. All right, I'm going to open up the questions. That's enough from me. What questions do you have? What questions do you have? Mm -mm -mm. I'll have to convert one of my one of the rooms in a studio. Yes, it's always a good idea. Yeah, I mean we could our, our um, you know Wednesday live stream. We could turn that into a giant classroom online. Um, and for those that want to participate, of course, you could, wa you could watch passively and not get actively involved. But if you want to participate, then, you know, there'll be, you've seen the virtual reality headsets that people wear. So there'll be some sort of technology. And, and I think what, what um, Facebook are talking about is just eyeglasses, you know, like you put them on and it's going to have a little camera in the side, but it also will project the virtual reality image on your glasses. So, the, the, yeah, as Jenny says, the technology is moving dramatically. Um, so we're not probably not that far away from being able to start to run, you know, virtual reality classes so that you guys could all paint along in your own studios. And the, the experience would be that we're all in the same space doing it. So Peter said, I saw a banner yesterday in the members area advertising the LTP app. Okay, I did not realize that was in there. Um, ignore that. <laughs> Whatever you do, don't click on that. Um, I'm I'm building an app, um, which has proved a little bit more difficult than what I anticipated. So um, yeah, there may or may not be a, a LTPA app coming in the future. Um, so ignore that. <laughs> All right, uh, I've run into a few roadblocks with it. Um, so. Jenny says, they already have glasses that have a camera in them. Yeah, absolutely, they do. Absolutely. It's the projecting of the virtual reality onto the screen. I think that's probably what they're working on at the moment um, to make it fully immersive. Um, okay, Manju says, I have a business-related question today. I put up my magpie on Facebook and someone asked me how much would I sell it for. I said, I have no idea. She said, ask your teacher. Um, well, I, look, as a one-off sale, I think it depends on how much the painting means to you individually and how much you think she'd pay. Um, you know, if you don't have a, an established price point for your art just now, then you know it really comes down to how much you want to keep it versus how much you'd be prepared to sell it for, and that's only something you can decide. It's a bit like real estate at the moment, right? It's booming in our area here, and. Um, you know, a year ago, I might have been prepared to accept eight hundred thousand for my house, but today, probably not. Right? So it's kind of a similar sort of um, scenario. So I think you have to really decide how much that painting means to you, and at what price point would you be prepared to let it go, um, and then put that price to it. You want to keep it? Well, then keep it. You know, if you don't want to sell it, then keep it definitely. Um, so you probably answered your own question there. Bub says, I can't wait for that to start since the pandemic, missing the contact with my art friends. Yeah, absolutely, Bub. I agree. Um, there is a problem selling on Facebook personal page, communicate via Messenger. Um, yeah, you can't use your personal page for business. It's in the terms and conditions for Facebook, so just be mindful of that. Uh, my mum. Uh, Gail said, we would need cameras and new PJs. <laughs> yep. You're probably going to need to at least be partially well presented. <laughs> uh, Kathleen said, love your enthusiasm for forward thinking. I'll be at your first workshop. Good on you, Kathleen. Appreciate that. Kathleen said, ready player one. <laughs> yeah, it very much is a bit like that. And look, there's potentially downsides to it. Um, losing actual human contact, I think, is a problem mental health issues and so on. But then on the other hand, the world we've all been in for the last 50 years, it's not sustainable. So we have to evolve. Um, unless Elon can get us all to Mars, you know, we're, <laughs> we might be in trouble if we don't start embracing new ideas and new thinking. Serena said, wish I had a studio. When I set up my painting space, my little house is a mess. You know, Serena, I started in a closet 
um, when I started painting. So I feel for you. Um, yeah, it's not not always the easy thing, but you've got to just make do with the with the best scenario you can you can set up for yourself. Gail said we are all thinking of how this will impact us and our reserved natures. Well, I mean, you, you know, you don't have to interact. You could still passively watch rather than actively engage. That's a personal choice. Um, um, housework. Um, Metaverse, says Julie. Yes. <laughs> Metaverdi. Uh, Pauline said, definitely more eco-friendly, for sure. Holy crap, says Terry Ann. Not sure what you're referring to there. <laughs> Love working in my PJs. Sounds incredible, says Pauline. Terry Ann, please let me into the MCI program. Um, Terry Ann, if you're interested in the MCI program, we're going to we're gonna be talking about that in early November. Um, so contact our support desk and let them know that you're interested in, in joining the More Certified Instructor Program. Um, I'm going to open it up for new enrolments in November. Um, we're only going to take 10 people, we're going to have smaller groups coming through, and um, it'll be by application. So, um, yeah, so if you are interested, contact our support desk and, and they, will, um, <laughs> they will put you on the wait list for that, and then we'll start talking about that in November. Pauline says, plain air painting. Do you use a viewfinder rectangle to get the best composition? I struggle with deciding on which bit of the landscape to paint. No, I don't. And um, one thing I can't stand, and this is just a personal thing, right, is when artists get out there and they start doing this kind of thing. I don't even know how to do it, right? And it's looking all arty. Personally, I can't stand that. Um, and I don't use a viewfinder either. What I look for is, is uh, big shapes, Right, big identifiable shapes, and I always look for uh, verticals like big tree mass shadows and um, and that type of thing. And, and look, it comes through experience. Um, you know, looking for a focal point is an important thing, and then knowing that you don't have to paint it literally. You can move a tree, or you can add in a tree if you need to. Right, you can borrow a tree that's not actually in the shot and pull it in if you need to or a rock or whatever so um, it, you'll get better at the composition as you go but one thing that's probably helpful is a little sketchbook and a little grey lead pen and just do a little sketch and try out little thumbnail sketches right you could do three or four trying out different compositions and just focus on darks and lights because that's really what's going to make your paintings a strong composition um, so I highly recommend that but um, I don't have a, a, a rectangle viewfinder, no, no. Um, Suzanne said, if I painted in PJs, there'd be paint in the bed. I, I'm with you there. I, um, <laughs> I, I get paint everywhere. Susan said, I post pics of new paintings on private Facebook page, but do not advertise they are for sale. I have said that one have been adopted by a new family. Well, start saying that they're for sale. If you go to my Facebook page, let's let's do that now, hey? Let's go to my Facebook page. And um, if you don't let people know that you've got a painting for sale, they're not going to assume that you're wanting to sell it. So you could just got to be a little bit bold and daring. And there's nothing wrong with promoting yourself. You know, like a lot of artists have issues around self-promotion. They don't want to see be seen as promoting themselves. But if you've got a... If you're creating something of value for the world, um, then you should promote it, right? Because there's somebody out there who's going to connect with that piece of art and who would love to have it in their home, but they might not know to ask, right? So, you know, I put things like now available, um, details, the link to go and buy it, right? I put that link there so that people can actually come in here and add it to their cart and check out and buy it. Um, so nobody's going to buy paintings that, they're not aware of for sale. So don't be afraid. There's absolutely nothing wrong. Oh, there's me talking. Um, I'm just looking down here. So I did a little video on it here as well, promoting the same painting, okay, talking about the painting. So don't be afraid, whatever you do, to promote your own artwork, right? If you're proud of the artwork, out of the 7.5 billion people on the face of the planet, somebody out there is going to resonate with it and going to think, you know what, I'd like to have that for my home. So... Um, Never be, yeah, always promote it and let people know. You have to be um, a little bit directive 
Okay, so by directive, I what I mean is, if you post a painting up and and you want some and you want to sell it, that you say, hey, you know, this one is now available for sale. Here's the link to go and buy it. You know, you have to direct people um, online. So um, and there's nothing wrong with that, right? The the days of artists not promoting themselves and my art will speak for itself, right? <laughs> Most of the artists who take that attitude, their, their artwork's not speaking loud enough. You know, I know great artists who work in factories. Right? Why? Because they've got this thing about not being businesslike, not trying to sell their artwork. Don't be like that. The world needs your art. So there we are. Peter summed it up. I'm rambling along here. Peter summed it up in four words. Sales 101. Ask for the order. <laughs> Good on you, Peter. That's exactly what I was trying to say. Gail said, you ought to have a L2PA gift shop with branded items. You know, Gail, that's a damn good idea. You know, like mugs and bags and aprons. Um, and it's on my list of projects, definitely. So um, my list of projects is pretty long, though. <laughs> when in January you're starting your Back to Basics? Probably around about the 5th ish 7th of january i haven't looked at the calendar yet so um somewhere around there uh jenny says if you have a facebook business page does facebook ask your friends to like it no they don't ask but they do provide the facility for you to ask them so let's come back and have a look do, 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 do. okay so here's my rodmore art page the way i started my art page and i cover all of this in the artist business academy but the way I started it was, um, now it's all changed, of course, since then. Um, um, um. I probably won't be able to find it now. Uh, 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 uh. Community, maybe. They change it every day. But anyway, there's a function in here somewhere um, where you can invite your friends, right? Um, maybe because my page has grown to such a level... I, it's no longer there but certainly when you set up your page there's an invite your friends option um, and I've done a video on that in the Artist Business Academy do you want to see some, something fun see this guy on the left hand side here <laughs> that's back in my uh, musician days that's Frankie and uh, Pat and Kevin we had a little band called well it was a little blues band called Dirty Work back in the day alright that's enough of that Da -da -da -da. Yeah, so um, you, you want to invite all your family and friends into your business page, um, without a doubt. Gail says we won't have time to paint. <laughs> oh, you mean by doing a quick little sketch? Yeah, I'm going to take like 30 seconds to do the sketch. It's just a little quick little outline just to play around with composition. Judy says, I love plein air painting and would like to go to distant places, but too old now for extended travel. I can see this technology making it possible to paint another. Absolutely what I was thinking, Judy. You know, like um, May of last year, I was meant to have been in France and Italy, as many of you know, and doing workshops there. And, um, you know, pandemic hit and whatnot. But you're spot on. You imagine if, we, if I could set up a virtual reality experience where we go painting in the south of France or in uh, Tuscany, right? Um, and it's a three-day thing and, you know, we'll have plenty of breaks for lunch and all that sort of stuff. Um, it'll be awesome. <laughs> Sing us a song. Uh, no tans, Dave. Exactly right, which we haven't really talked a lot about in the Learn to Paint Academy, but it's definitely something that needs to be part of um, both the composition and the values course, and it's on my list of things to add in there. Um, all right, questions. What questions do we have? Nina says, can you sell directly out of Facebook or just direct people to your website? No, not at this stage, uh, Nina. Me, um, seems like people are interested in selling, so let's come back here, right? Um, this is my Rodmore art page, right? In fact... <coughs> If Julie's still on the call, uh, I might pull up Julie's um, page as well, right? But this is my page. Now, um, I'll also call up, just give me one second, seeing as I was a couple of questions about selling your artwork, right? I'll just call up my page. Okay. This is my Rodmore Art website. So you can get there by rodmore.art. By the way, I'm running a Christmas promotion right now. And you can get 25% off all my paintings. 
just type in Christmas 21 as the coupon code, right? But anyway, this is my, um, my website and this website is built on Shopify, which is what I recommend currently. It's my recommended um, platform, right? Because it maintains a catalog of all your available paintings and all of your sold ones as well. So I've got a page here of all my sold work as well, right? Um, but it maintains this catalog in the back end. And the reason why that's important is because it then, when you add, like I added this one here yesterday into my Rodmore Art site, okay? Um, you can buy it directly off my site and you can use the coupon code I just gave you or you can buy it with Afterpay, right? So a few different methods. But what's important about this is Shopify now pushes your catalog of items into your Facebook business store, right? So this is my business page for Rodmore Art. And if I come down here, now you're seeing the administration view, okay? Normally you wouldn't see it looking like this. <laughs> if I come to shop, Okay, so it's pulling all of these items directly out of my rodmore.art Shopify store. What's good about that is I only have to list it once on Shopify and it's now pushed it into um, my uh, Facebook page, right? At the moment, you can't buy it on Facebook, but I think that might change in the future or it might be available in certain places. Um, but you can't buy it here. But if somebody likes it on Facebook, like they find it here in, in the shop on Facebook, they click on view on website, it takes them automatically to the page where the buy now button is. Okay, so that's a good thing. It also pushes it out to Instagram. Okay. So it pushes it out to the Facebook shop, it pushes it out to the Instagram shop. <laughs> and of course, it's going to make a liar out of me. Where's my shop? Do, 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 do. It's definitely here somewhere. <laughs> um, 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 um. Uh, maybe it's only on mobile, the shop. Um, if you go and look on Instagram on the mobile app, it, you know you, you can click on any of these and it'll take you into the shop on Instagram, right? There's the coupon code for those who are interested, Christmas 21. So, um, yeah, so you can, at the moment, I, as far as I'm aware, or certainly not in Australia because Facebook will test different things in different areas, right? But as far as I'm aware, you can't go and um, set up a transaction within Facebook at this point. Now, I could be wrong about that because I haven't put enough time into looking into it, um, so I could be wrong about that. But I, I, I'd imagine that they're working on it soon. Um, Christmas 21, but no space. It's just Christmas 21 as one line, Terry. Um, Julie, is it okay if I show your... Facebook page because Julie's been uh, following along our program in the Artist Business Academy and um, it's starting to get really good results, you know, and, and just through being consistent and producing good work, I think she sold three paintings a day or two ago to, to one person. So um, if that's okay with you, Julie, just let us know. Cool. Thank you. It's a bit of promotion for you as well, hey. Julie... <coughs> All right, that's not the right page. Bum, ba -dum, ba -dum, bum. Bear with me, folks. My computer's about to take off. There we go. <coughs> Pardon me. All right, so I typed in Julie Mallow Art. Come and have a look. And um, your number of subscribers has grown quite nicely. Great. Um, so... Julie has her shop set up. So this is the normal view because I'm not an admin of Julie's uh, store, obviously. But this is the normal view. And um, people can come in here into your shop and they can go, oh, I really like that one of 1770 there. Dun, 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 dun. And, oh, I think I might have a closer look at that. Click on view on website. And then Julie's got her sales set up on Etsy, right? Which is one of the platforms we talk about in the Artist Business Academy. And um, and there it is. I could buy it now. Um, and uh, it's a good thing, right? So it's only one click away from Facebook. But the fact that you put your shop in, every time you add a product into your shop on Facebook or Instagram, it appears in the news feed. And so it notifies all your, everybody who likes your page, right? And you can see there, Julie's made 10 sales from her Etsy shop and she's really only just got going. So everybody give Julie a round of applause because she's just 
been very consistent and working hard at it and doing great things. So well done, Julie. Very proud of you. All right, and doing videos and stuff as well. So I don't want to just talk about the business side of art. So has anybody got any other questions? Terry says, Facebook's too powerful now, almost a monopoly. Well, it is a monopoly, isn't it, really? There's <laughs> not much else out there like it. Um, so the, as I said, there's, there's good things and there's bad things about, you know, the developments of Facebook are talking about. I'm going to choose to focus on the positive things and how we can all benefit as a community of people trying to improve ourselves on our art journey. Um, and I'm sure there'll be tons of opportunities for us to do that. Okay, what kind of advice can you give us for, for getting great pictures of your paintings? You mean photos? Um, well, it all comes down to lighting, and having a good quality camera, I think. But I have to admit, that's been one of my Achilles heels that's held me back from really selling my own artwork is I never liked the photos of my work. They always look better in real life, right? Um, so I struggle with that. Um, but yeah, you need a good quality camera on a tripod and you need good lighting, good even balanced lighting. So you want to have it up vertical rather than laying flat. Um, in the Artist Business Academy, for those of you who have joined, there's actually a number of videos in there on photographing your artwork. Um, so check those out if you're a member. Nina says, can you sell directly out of... Oh, that, that was what we were just talking about. Thank you for your question, Nina. Um, Serena says, fantastic, Julie. Mary says, well done. Susan says, good for you, Julie. Congrats, Julie, says Manju and Jenny and... Um, 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 um. Peter says tried to establish a shop from my Peter Norman art page and got bounced for not complying with business policies well that would be interesting to find out which particular business policies you didn't comply with um, one of the big problems with Facebook being the size that they are is that um, you know, it's difficult to deal with human beings so they've got all these AI bots that make these sort of decisions and, and they tend to be a bit black and white rather than, um, you know, thinking outside the box. That's one of the downsides. Gail said, when you list the size of your painting, do you list the size of, your, of the canvas or the frame picture? Uh, depends on where you're listing it. Um, you know, if I was putting up just on a Facebook post, then I'd probably put both. Um, but if you're putting it into online galleries, some of them will ask you for the different measurements. Some of them only want the image size. Um, some of them want the finished postal size, which can be different again. So, um, so it depends, really. Whereabouts are going to list them, Gail? Peter said, asked for a review and got rejected with no explanation. Yeah, that's happened to me with a few different things on Facebook. Can you have more than one Facebook business page? Absolutely, Steve. I've got a number of them. You know, so Learn to Paint Academy, Rodmore Art, are two that you'd be aware of. Um, so yes, definitely can have more than one Facebook business page. Um, would you have any tips for painting a mountain properly? Well, you know, like... Um, da -da -da -da, um, you know, painting a mountain properly... Well, let's have a look at that. Let's have a look at that. I think, you know, one of the things we have to stop thinking about is individual things because I always get asked, how do I paint a tree or how do I paint a mountain or how do I paint a rock? And people get really focused on the element itself and they forget the underlying um, things that we need to do to, to be able to render any object, right? So the first thing we have to keep in mind is it's a we're trying to capture something that exists in a three-dimensional space um, on a two-dimensional surface. So let's just talk about that concept because that's important, right? So um, let's see if I can pull this off here. Boom. Kaboom. Right. And um, what we're talking about here is when we do a painting, okay, we're painting two dimensions. Okay, we have height and we have width. Okay, 
they're the two dimensions we've got to work with. When we look in the outside world, what it is that we're trying to recreate, we have height and so height and width, but we have a third dimension, as you'd all know, which is depth. Okay. So this is our third dimension. Now we don't have that when we're doing a painting, do we? Okay, so we've got depth as well. Our job is to be able to convey what we see in, in the subject. So take all of this, these three dimensions, and make it look realistic on a two-dimensional surface. So we have to try and create the illusion of depth in our painting, right? So that's the first thing we have to keep in mind, is that we, we need to use some element of um, illusion to be able to render any object. It doesn't matter if it's a mountain, a tree, a rock, you know, any, any element that we're trying to render, except for abstract, right? We need to create the illusion that there is some depth in there as well. And you can tell the difference between a, um, you know, somebody who's just started out painting versus somebody who is a professional artist, you know, professional landscape artist. And the difference is, um, well, there's a number of them, but the, the, the hobby artist or the beginner artist doesn't have a feel of depth in their painting. It all looks flat, right? No feel of depth in there. So what that means is they probably haven't understood or not yet learnt how to create the illusion, okay? So now if we come in and we talk about an object, right, and I'll get to the mountain side of things in a moment but if we come and talk about an object like a apple right so it's got a, i still haven't quite worked out how to use this pen right but there's our apple for the teacher <laughs> uh, hands up if you ever took an apple in for the teacher you hear about that all the time but i've never actually met anyone who took an apple in for their teacher okay so there's an apple right now at the moment this apple only has two dimensions. It has height, okay, height, and width, okay. Now, just so that we're clear that I'm talking about mountains, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put next to this a jolly mountain, right? So let's do a, whoa, come on, Rod, get it together. Okay, let's do a Bob Ross Bill Alexander style mountain, right? Um, Alaskan style of mountain there, right? So at the moment, this mountain only has width and height, two dimensions, right? You with me so far? Is this making sense? Let me just check in and make sure that we're making sense. <laughs> uh, because this is an important concept to get. And then once you get this concept, you, you'll no longer start thinking of how do I paint of this or how do I paint of that. You'll, you'll look for the underlying structure that gives things the illusion of dimensionality, right? So um, Becky says, I haven't taken apples to the teacher, but I have taken poems, drawings and flowers. Oh, good on you, Becky. Jenny said, not an apple, but I did make Anzac biscuits. Nice, nice. Yep, making sense. Okay, cool. Um... I purchased some rosemary uh, after you recommended them and I'm now addicted. Such great quality. Yeah, fantastic. And um, handmade too. Fantastic. Well done, Kerry Ann. Yep, makes sense, says Gail. Where are we up to here? Um, okay, a couple of questions I'll come back to. So Magdalene and Pauline, make sure I get back to your questions. Jenny says, yes, making sense. Terry Ann, yes. Okay, cool. Sounds like we're on track, right? Because this applies to every object that you want to paint, right? It's, it's not just mountains or apples, right? It's, just, it's every object, okay? So um, because of the limitations of this, oh, and I've got a couple of different values there, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm now going to turn, how do we turn this apple into a three dimension? How do we get d the depth and dimension in there so that we get a sense of form, right? So what, first thing we have to know is what is the light source. So let's say the light's coming in this way. So what we need is to create to the starting blocks of illusion is we need at least three values, okay? At least three values. So we need a dark, which is what we're going to put in here, right? Let me see how I go. I only just bought this drawing pad, so I'm absolute 
amateur with it, right? But we start to put in our dark tones there, and all of a sudden we also have shadow coming in it, right? So all of a sudden that has a, just a little bit more feel of um, some element of dimension as opposed to just height from width, right? And then we have a middle value. Whoop, middle value. Okay, which is, this is the part of the apple that's now getting a little bit more light in it, right? It's getting a little bit more light than the dark side of the apple, or as Pink Floyd would have said, the dark side of the moon, right? And then we get the part of the apple that's in light. This bit in here, right? It's catching the light. So we need at least three values to start to get a feel of, of form <coughs> into it, right? And this is a very crude, rudimentary drawing, but all, all of a sudden it's starting to just have a little bit of a feel of a bit more volume and depth in it. Can you see that? Be kind, because my drawing skills with this tablet are not that great. And then, of course, we're going to have a highlight a little rim shot of light where the light's bouncing off it. Okay. Now, if you want to see that as an example, go and grab an apple, put a very definite light source on one side and examine it. Okay. Now, obviously, it, it's in color, right? I've just drawn that in black and white. It's going to be in color. So we're going to have transitional um, colors, right? It's going to be... I don't have the facility to be able to do it um, with this, but... There's going to be a little bit of yellow into it and so on. So you start bringing colour. Um, but the, just the three values all of a sudden give it dimension. So how does that apply to um, our Bob Ross mountain, right? Well, if you, can, if you watch Bob Ross, what he and Bill Alexander, um, Bob actually got all his ideas from Bill Alexander, but what he would do is he would initially, he would block in the entire mountain range. I won't do it here because it'll take too long, but he would block in the entire block in the, the dark value, right? And then he'd use that funny little palette knife and he would scrape the highlights and the middle values in with that, okay? So we come here, we get our middle values in here, which is probably gonna be the snow parts, right? Snow through there. Okay, and then it's gonna have highlights or the parts that are in light, because the same light source coming in this way, right? So, and you, you see him do this, he scrapes on that white paint and lets the canvas pull it off, pull the paint off, um, and you get these broken sort of effects that he, you know, and all of a sudden it starts to have three dimensionality, right? So here's, here's a real point that we need to know about painting basically any element in a landscape, right? There's really only a few things that you need to know. Um, actually, what I will do, I'll just reduce that size down so that we can refer to that. Okay, we'll come back here and we'll go back to my pen. I'll reduce the thickness of it. Okay, what do we need to do? The first thing is to get any element to look like what it's meant to look like. The first thing is the overall shape. Okay, so the overall shape is going to be this this is the shape right so if you if you don't get the shape right then it's not going to look right okay so that's the overall shape the big shape so you need to get that right and you need to place it in the right spot on the canvas that's the first thing second thing then is three values minimum right but three values are the easiest to learn because that gives us um, form that's what creates the form right this apple here for instance it's round and it's turning away from the light okay so we've got our light we've got our middle and we've got our dark okay so as it turns away from the light it goes to dark and it casts a shadow here right now there's a lot more to it this is a very beginner or not beginner it's very basic approach but this light here is going to be bouncing 
off of the tabletop and it's going to be reflecting under here. So we need to incorporate a bit of reflected light in there as well. So there's a few things like that, but let's keep it simple, right? So the second thing there is values to create the form, right? Then we need color. Okay, color. So to get a mountain to look right in the distance, color becomes an important consideration. So if I just draw a little frame here, okay, and I sort of replicate that little mountain range there like that, but I want that to sit in the background, right? So how do I make it sit in the background? Well, we know that with color, that a bluey gray sort of feel to it will make that sit in the background and then warmer tones like putting in the pine trees the way Bob would do, right? That'll push the mountains back with warmer tones in the foreground. Green's not that warm, but we'll add a bit of gold for a bit of sunlight as a highlight. And all of a sudden those trees come forward and the mountain goes back, right? So we know that color plays a really important component in rendering a mountain or an apple, right? So color, there's a few considerations. There's the hue, right? Which is the outside of the color wheel. Okay, the colors on the outside. There's the um, temperature. Warm colors come forward, cool colors go back. And then there's the saturation. Okay, highly saturated in the foreground, desaturated in the background, right? So that's the next thing that's going to make your mountain look right is the right combination of color being the hue, the temperature, and the saturation. The fourth thing that's going to make your mountain look right, like a mountain, or your apple like an apple, is going to be the way you apply the marks you make, right? we'll call it marks, um, either with a brush or a knife or however you apply the paint, but the nature of the marks that you make. So if you think about um, a mountain, you want to create the illusion of the land falling away by the way that you use your brush marks, right? Um, so this area in here, if you want to have a look at that sort of sweeping area where the glaciers come through then you need to use your brushes and your marks in the right direction okay so that's important so we've got shape three colors as a, three values as a minimum color and the marks that you make so brush work okay uh, and we also have edges right so you need to have a combination of hard edges where you want to draw the eye to and soft edges that you want to minimize and push into the background um, or often referred to as lost and found edges. Okay. You can't just have a pa painting with all hard edges unless you're doing you know, buildings or something. But even then you want to have a combination of edges. <coughs> okay, so we've got shapes. Now, if you think about shapes, what, would, what are we really talking about there is it's largely it's a composition question, right? Composition, big shapes, okay? Now, interestingly, those of you who are members of the Learn to Paint Academy will know that basically what I've just outlined there is everything we put into the foundation, or no, the fundamentals course, sorry, fundamentals program that we have within the Learn to Paint Academy. So we have a course on composition, we have a course on values, we have a course on colour, we have a course on brushes and brushwork, and we're, I'm going to incorporate edges into that, right? So that's, they're the things you need to really master in order to start producing good-looking mountains or apples or trees or rocks. The other thing you need is you need to understand how mountains look and feel, so collecting reference material so that the more you examine and look and analyze how a mountain looks the type of mountain you're trying to create um, the better equipped you'll be to be able to utilize shape values color brush work and edges okay but this is what you want to concentrate on because this is how you create any element in a landscape alrighty so um, I hope that's helpful I don't know if I've just been rambling on or not or if that was actually useful <laughs> um, so, um, perspective, yeah. Well, what I was just talking about there really was uh, aerial perspective. There's also linear perspective, which we don't talk about too much, um, but we will at some point. Peter says, essential mind shift to stop looking at objects 
rather than shapes. Yeah, exactly right. As long as you think, how do I paint a tree? You're thinking about things in the wrong way. Um, as from a painter's perspective, right? We've got, to, we've got to leave that mindset behind and start thinking about every element has a shape, right? An outside shape. It has values, you know, minimum of dark, mid and light. It has edges and, and it has some form of color combination, right? So that's how you've got to think about things. And when you start trying to look at objects in a, in a landscape in that way, looking, what is the shape, right? What are the edges? then you start to see things in a way that is going to make it far more likely that you can paint it, right? Um, but as long as you think that a, a rock has a certain thing you need to do um, with rocks to make it look real, um, you know, it'll hold you back from painting because you're looking for that magic thing about rocks or about water or whatever. Yes, Dave, it's a program called Myro. It's a whiteboard software. Dorinda says, great demo. Thank you, Dorinda. Sandy says, early on in the joy of painting, Bob Ross always gave Bill Alexander credit for teaching him. Yep. And then that sort of changed over time. <laughs> oh, good, Jenny. I'm glad you enjoyed that. Thanks, Winnie. Sajada says, going over the fundamentals is always useful. It's, it's essential. Yeah, absolutely. Um, let me see. Now, there was a couple of questions. Um, Not a very juicy looking apple. <laughs> Limitations, uh, Carleen, of uh, my ability to use the drawing pad. <laughs> Thanks, Serena. Uh, Kerry Ann said, I have a lot of trouble painting realistic trees. Do you have any suggestions to improve? Well, I think hopefully I'll just answer that question for you, Kerry Ann. Stop thinking of them as trees and think of them as elements that have a number of components to it. Thanks, Gail. Thank you, Serena. Thank you, Anne. Thank you, Carleen. Um, 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 um. There was a question back here. Oh, Magdalene, how do you hang all your paintings on your wall as per your background screen? Um, that's a frame, uh, it's a gallery hanging system. Uh, so if I bring up, bring up this picture here. Oh, and that doesn't really help either. But you can see in between the paintings there, the two bigger ones there, there is a um, a cord hanging down. Okay, um, so there's a there's a uh, gallery hanging system that runs up along the top, and then there's dropping down from there are wires that have hooks in them, and it's all adjustable. So it's a gallery hanging system that I had installed. Um, most art supplies stores will have some form of a gallery hanging system so um i know eckersley's supply the one that i have pauline said do you go through phases of painting certain types of scenes you are drawn to or generally mix up land and seascapes do you go by what you like or what you know the customer likes um i only ever paint what i want to paint um so i'm not driven by market demand because you know it's, it's a marketplace of seven billion people so you know, pretty much whatever you paint, there's going to be somebody out there who's going to like it. And I just paint what I feel like, you know. Sometimes I'm really into the beach. Other times I'm, you know, go to the outback and um, other times it's landscape. So it just really comes down to what I feel like. Uh, I never paint to the market though. Now there is probably some validity to doing that, um, but it's not what I do. Yeah, I think as long as I paint, something that makes me happy there's going to be somebody else out in the world who will be happy with it as well makes sense says terry ann 100 says tracy beverly yes pauline said your apple demo reminded me of your mugs project yeah i mean it's a similar thing isn't it it's just a a rounded shape a good app yep <laughs> um julie says is there any difference between artist spray varnish and spray varnish that isn't necessarily designed for art like what you'd find in a Bunnings. Uh, do you have Bunnings in New Zealand? Um, you probably do. Uh, look, I don't know, to be honest. I don't, I'm not really uh, that into varnish to find out, <laughs> to be honest. Um, I buy my varnish. There's a little news agent up the road in my the village I live in, um, and it has a little art supplies section in the back, and... They've always got cans of varnish, so whenever I'm going by, I pop in and I buy a can of varnish. So I don't know what Bunnings have got, to be honest. Um, and I have tried in the past buying varnish that you brush on, right? But um, 
I found it difficult to use because very petrochemical based um, <laughs> it nearly killed me so I don't use that I, I never paint it on um, I spray it on I do it outside so the wind can take it away so I can't really answer your question Julie um, you probably are going to be better off with an, a specific one for artist um, preserving art paintings I suspect yeah and um, but beyond that I really don't know Anne said how cool was that little lesson great teaching oh good on you Anne Glad it helped. Anne is another one who's doing great work with her sales and um, getting good results and um, doing really well. Well done, Anne. Audrey says, was good, thank you. Good on you. Trace said 100. So useful, says Terry Ann. You definitely have a talent for teaching. Thank you, Pauline. Beverly said, if you have a life membership to the Fundamentals course, do you get the updates? Yeah, you do. So if, you, if you're a Fundamentals program member, um, you, it's a one-off fee and you get it for life. So whenever I add new content into the courses that are part of that program, then that'll obviously be included for you, yeah. Um, so I do have plans to go and add more into the Composition course, more into the Values course. I've got some more ideas in the Colour course. So um, And we need to talk about edges in a bit more detail. So... Um, so there is more content coming, you know, probably next year sometime. Uh, thank you, Jenny. G'day, Anne. How are you? Anne's another one who sells really well, not because of me, but because she does great work. And she's well, the great thing I like about Anne. I met Anne a couple of years ago at a workshop, and um, she's just very consistent. Paints all the time, and is always listing them up and putting them on her social media and putting them into online galleries. And she sells a lot of work. So. Um, you know, well done, Anne. Um, Anne says, thank you, Rod. Have watched part of this session. Really like the whiteboard info. Very good, Anne. Um, for those who don't know, like the composition course that we have in the uh, Learn to Paint Academy is um, it's pretty much all done on a whiteboard type presentation because it's just a good way to explain composition. Julie said, I found the paint in varnish smeared a bit. Oh, you mean the paint on? Yeah, you really have to let it dry fully because when you start putting a brush there then it's going to affect it so the spray varnish allows you to do it a bit earlier i think do i wear a mask no i do it outside and um you know i stand back and you know i've got a, a reasonably long arm so i try not to breathe while i'm spraying it on um painting it upside down helps to just look at shapes yeah absolutely susan we, uh, we had a go at doing that in one of our recent challenges. All right. Any other questions, friends? Oh, hang on. Let me have a look here. Um, Tatiana just ordered the Master in Composition. Good on you, Tatiana. Sandy, the rules you have outlined also apply to photography, so my background in photography has made it much easier. Yeah, certainly to do with composition as well in photography, like you know the rule of thirds and focal points and so on. Dave said, I've decided to start with fundamentals, even though it's something you've learned in the past, there's always more to capture. Yeah, it's good to refresh. You know, I'm um, looking at signing up with a, an, online, an art instructor who he's basically going over stuff that I already know, but just to hear it from somebody else's perspective. Um, so I'm always open to that. How do you feel about gambling oils? Not use them, Dave. I, I use water mixable oils. Uh, so I typically use Cobra by Royal Talons or um, Windsor & Newton's Artisan brand. So I've not used the gambling oils. I had to give up um, anything that needs a solvent. Um, Shez says, is the cost of Shopify worth doing when you were just starting out? Um, I think I pay about 40 bucks a month for Shopify from memory. So it depends on what your vision is. You know, like, I think if you've got a vision to build a business that generates regular ongoing sales um, and that you create a, an income from and, that, you know, you're really committed to it and you keep working at it, then the cost is definitely worth starting. But, you know, the... the if you're just starting out selling and you're going through the Artist Business Academy, stick with eBay and Etsy because the problem with Shopify is that, well, the, the positive of eBay and Etsy is that people go to those platforms every day to buy art and other things, right? But they go there to buy art. When you set up a Shopify store, nobody's going to go to it, right? So then therefore, the cost is probably not justifiable. So you need to build an audience of people, right? 
um, before you'd open up a Shopify store. And so you, I, I used eBay and Etsy, or I didn't use Etsy, but that's another opportunity to start to build an audience for myself, right? And I attracted them onto my social media and then I opened up a Shopify store once I already had some things happening, right? So um, if you open a Shopify store and you don't have an audience and you don't know how to send buyers to that Shopify store, then it's just going to sit there and do nothing for you, okay? Just be mindful of that. Um, Meryl says, with Varnish, we used to have to be careful it wouldn't yellow over time. Uh, yeah, uh, I thought that was more linseed oils and stuff. I'm not sure, but <coughs> um, I've never had a problem with it yellowing. My pleasure, Dave. Becky said, I recently had my first show and four of my larger L2PA paintings sold. Fantastic. Becky, well done. Everybody's selling, it sounds like. That's awesome. Well done. Great news. Great news. Um, Gail gets her husband to spray it. It's always good to enlist the family into the activities that we don't particularly want to do. So good on you, Gail. Sheila said, I'm wondering about varnishing over oil paintings when it's only touch dry. Surely oil paintings need time to dry fully. Depends on your definition of drying fully, Sheila. To be fully dry, an oil painting can take six months to two years, right? So oil paints dry through a process of oxidation, um, and that's a long process. So, um, you know, what you want, to, when, when it's touch dry, I've always spray varnished touch dry oil paintings and I've never had a problem and then they will cure and become fully dry over time even when they're varnished so I've never had a problem with that at all um, but I mean if you want to store them all and wait two years for them to be fully cured then that's an option <coughs> just means you need a lot of storage space right <coughs> but I can pretty much assure you you walk into any gallery modern gallery modern art um, with big oil paintings on the wall, I guarantee you that they haven't been sitting around curing for two years before they're exhibiting them and selling them. Uh, G'day, Jill. Kerry says, great to be able to watch you this morning due to our public holiday in Brisbane. Oh, yeah, forgot about that. What's the public holiday for? <laughs> you inspired me to spend the rest of the day painting. Fantastic. Serena says, where can I buy cheaper art books? Well... One place that I get a lot of cheaper art books is in, um, what would you call them? Here in Australia, we have what we call Salvation Army um, stores that have secondhand clothing and things like that. And um, often they'll have book sections. And so that's a good place to buy secondhand books. Another place is on eBay. People who are clearing out, their, you know, they're moving and they have to sell all their stuff. And they had a dream of being an artist 10 years ago and now they've got all these books laying around so that's another place um, you can actually buy secondhand books on Amazon and you can get them a lot cheaper than buying the you know the new ones um, you know like because I generate an income from my art when I buy an art book it's a tax deduction right so I'm, I'm uh, you know they're all tax deductions because it's part of my learning um, program and education program um, but you know go to Amazon and buy secondhand books um that's an option as well. Op shops, that's the word I was looking for. Thank you, Carlene. Um, so there's a few ideas for you, Serena. Um, oh, Eka, right. Eka, yeah. Charity shops, that's the another word for it here in the UK. Got frames there as well. So there you go. All right. Absolute last chance to ask me a question. Loads of people heading to the Sunshine Coast. Oh, boy. <laughs> Does that mean I'm going to not find anywhere to go for coffee today? Jenny says, when painting a landscape, do I worry about the small white dots in a tree, maybe where the sky meets a tree? Well, it's up to you as to whether you want to worry about them or not. I can tell you that some of the great paintings in history, if you go and look closely in museums, there's bits of white canvas showing through a lot of them. Um, if it particularly bothers you, then... You could always just put a stain of a, um, you know, a colour underneath first before you start painting. Um, yeah, I, I wouldn't be particularly... I've, lots of my paintings have had white canvas showing through that I've sold and um, I don't think it's necessarily a problem. 
All right. Most interesting Friday chat, says Jenny. Good idea, Jenny. Glad you've enjoyed it. So, friends, we're all headed to the metaverse. Uh, Zuckerberg's leading the way, closely followed by the Learn to Paint Academy. And uh, we're going we're gonna to take what we do here at the Learn to Paint Academy and project it into the future. And it won't be long before we're having virtual reality workshops and we'll all come together, which means somebody's going to have to make scones and bring those. And um, are we still in lockdown? Uh, not in Queensland here where I am, Robert. Um, and I believe that there's been a general change in attitude in other parts of the country as well. So lockdown is, um, is starting to come to an end. Bumper to bumper on the Bruce Highway. You may have trouble getting a seat in a coffee shop. Yeah, that's a bugger, isn't it? But, you know, can't complain. Thank you, Caroline. Well, everybody, have a great day. Have a great weekend. Um, thank you all so much for joining me. Always a pleasure. And um, we will talk again soon. All righty. Oh, before I go, I was meant to put these up again. I was very proud of myself. Have a look at the laptop on the screen there. I've managed to insert my little uh, image of myself there. <laughs> uh, still learning technology. Um, thank you all for joining me. If you are new, first time joining us, then um, check out our free ebook. Just go to learntopaint.academy forward slash book. If you want to come and join our introductory program and learn about the more method of painting, which is the way we teach at Learn to Paint Academy, then go to learntopaint.academy forward slash MMOP. And if you want to become a, uh, a full access member of the Learn to Paint Academy, then go to learntopaintacademy dot, uh, dot academy forward slash join. And you can get all the details there on how to join the Learn to Paint Academy. And um, have a great day.